Hi, I'm Scientific Illustrator Stephanie Razzo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Go Out and Sketch an Umbrella Mantis instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch a praying mantis by using what you learned with your step-by-step -step lesson. You can follow along with this lesson even if you don't have the lesson kit. You can help this tiny business by shopping for future crates at naturesketchcrate.com by clicking that like button and subscribing to the YouTube channel. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. You can go out and sketch at a zoo, park, museum, garden, your backyard, or even an HD video. Today, I'm sketching from a composite video of a praying mantis for demonstrative purposes. Remember, this is just a sketch and experience is meant to be relaxing. So take your time observing nature and don't get too caught up with the details. Let's get started. So first you want to draw the mantis on your paper. You want to think about where you want it placed and how big you want it to be. And you can draw the whole mantis like our final reference image for the step-by-step -step, or you can just draw parts of the mantis blown up or small, whatever works for you. This is your sketch. So you can use simple shapes to go ahead and draw this in and I like to figure out the overall size first. So I'm going to draw a line from one side of the page to the other. And that's how, about how big my mantis will be. And then I will figure out about how big each of these parts take up in relation to each other. So when I'm drawing it in, I'm looking at the other parts of the body and how long they are. And it might not be completely right. And I can change things a little bit. I'm using very light marks to start here. And start adding in other parts using light marks and shapes as well to bring it all together. Still using simple shapes and looking at everything in relation, so one area to the other in relation to the other so that I can figure out the size. make any adjustments if I need to. And it doesn't need to be exact. This is just a sketch. And here I'm gonna look at the negative space to help me with this. And I'm gonna think, okay, this and this kind of line up. So maybe there. Again, not exact. I'm just quickly getting this drawing onto the page. Mantises tend to stay in one spot for a while, so I'm gonna give you some time to go ahead and draw it out and take a little bit more time sketching it, but you never know when an animal might leave. Again, I'm gonna look at the negative space here, kind of think about where this leg should be and what the space in here looks like in addition to the mantis itself. For sizing. And that helps a lot. So looking at this negative space, kind of figure out this triangle and that can help me figure out where these other lines belong and how big they should be using the light marks still because I'm just getting the initial sketch on the page I'm figuring out how long this goes it kind of goes to here so I'm looking at this in relation to the hook
I'm not going to spend a bunch of time getting it exact. Just kind of getting this animal on the page real quickly. We might draw a little bit of the leaf in the background, not the entire thing. I'm using slightly darker marks to start redefining some of these spaces. So looking at how wide this should be in relation to this here the thorax, the abdomen, this wing. So I'm looking at this for leg placement here. And then for this leg, I'm looking at this leg and then connecting it back over here. So every part can help you figure out where to put something else, like putting a puzzle together. These two parts here kind of in line. And the more you practice and the more you sketch, the better you'll get at this, but it does take some practice. It does help doing the step-by-step -step copying and creating a mantis before actually going out and sketching one in real life. You get to know it a little bit more before you go out. So you're familiar with what it looks like already by drawing it and painting it. Something else you could do is just go out and draw really super loose rough sketches beforehand to help you figure out the animal a little bit more as well. And I found this mantis right after it had laid. An Utheca. And I fed it some crickets and then I released it again after I took a little video of it. And it's a California mantis. And that identification is based on information from iNaturalist Seek. And nothing looks exactly right. Might be a little bit out of proportion, but it's just a sketch. So we're not going to get too caught up with it. And I'm going to let it be. Just define some of the areas with some darker lines and marks. And 
look at it a few times to try to make sure it's somewhat correct. The eye might be a little bit big, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. And I'm not going to erase for a couple of reasons. If I erase this paper, it won't take the watercolor very well. It could get um, a little rough. I can use my needed eraser to erase and lighten some marks, but I need to refrain from erasing too much. Then also animals tend to leave and being able to do this quicker is a skill that's necessary for sketching. I see what might be a little bit wrong. So this actually should be a little shorter. And that's really throwing me off here. So then this should be a little bit different there. So I'm just defining some of these lines that are a little bit rougher now that I have my proportions that I'm going to stick with in, even though they might be a little off. Even though I feel like the head's a little bit big, I'm going to leave it that way and I can just say to the side, this is a little bit larger than I intended. Or I can draw on inside and make sure just to paint kind of a little bit smaller. So there are some options for that. All right, so I think I like how this looks. So I'm going to write in the common name and scientific name like I usually do. And make sure you add any kind of observations you have, how you are feeling, how creating this made you feel, maybe the weather, um, anything about the animal that you were observing or something that you were um, thinking about your drawing, any uh, things you would change in the future or anything at all. This is your sketch, so make sure to make it your own. So now I am ready to add some paint. So next I'm going to add some paint and I'm going to add it in the same way I did with the Umbrella Mantis step by step. So the colors are very similar. I did um, save my old colors and I added a little bit of yellow to the green since this mantis is a little bit more yellow. So I'll revive these colors by adding just a little bit of water to them. And if needed, I can add some more of any of my colors have the little bottles here. And these are the colors I use for the step-by-step -step lesson. And I'm going to do this in this, basically the same order as the step-by-step. -step. So I'm going to use a really wet light green over the body. That looks about right. And I'm just going to color it in like I would with a marker. There are some areas that are a lot more yellow. I'll add some yellow in there too. So the coloration is a little bit different, but it uses all the same base colors. 
it might be helpful for you to bring your color wheel I have it on hand if you need it so I'll add just a quick layer so I'm starting one side to the other coloring in like I would with a crayon or a marker dabbing off onto my towel before applying the paint to my paper so that it's not too wet will dry faster that way it's also a little bit easier to control I'm just adding it over the entire mantis this area down here is a little white so I'm going to leave that but I think I'm going to add it to the rest and I'll clean off my brush and since I didn't use a lot of water I can move on and continue painting pretty fast like adding more paint to the same area so you can dab it with your finger to see if it's dry it's pretty close it should be ready by the time I get the next color ready so next I will add a little bit of this blue color just sticking with the same steps as a step-by-step -step. so a very very faint blue on the head and I can see a little bit here in the upper part of the thorax right in back here maybe a little bit in the legs just a hint maybe a little here as well just a little bit of blue Put just a tiny bit more right here and I just painted that right over the first layer again adding it in like I would with a marker or pen now I'm going to revive my yellow color adding a little bit of water to it in my palette not my paper I'm gonna pull a little bit more to the side and then test it out Maybe a little bit more water to it so it moves nicely. It's getting a little stuck on my paper when I paint. It should just be smooth. That looks good. So I'm going to pick up some more, dab it off onto my towel, and then start adding it in wherever I see it on the mantis I'm looking at in my reference. So I'm just going to add it here to the, um, the mouth and the eyes. And I think I'm just going to start from top to bottom and add it in. It's all dry. Even this area where I added the blue because it was just a very light concentrated blue and it didn't have a lot of water that I actually added to the paper itself. It's a kind of a quicker method. And you also have more control when you don't use a lot of water on the paper. I'm just going throughout and adding it wherever I see it on the mantis. And pick up more whenever I see it. it's kind of getting faint, so it's running out. looks about right. If I want to add more yellow or any other color, I can always go back and do it once it's dried. So now I'm going to add a little bit more of the green color, just a little bit of a drier, darker one. And this is just, you can look at the mantis and see where some parts are a little bit darker. I'm just adding it to those same places. picking up more whenever I need it. I'll also add it on the bottom parts of the legs here to give a little bit more contrast. Help it pop off the page a little bit more. Looks 
cleaning off my brush. And then I will revive this pink color. This mantis does have some pink in it as well, just like the umbrella mantis, just in a different spot. Its wings are not out either, so you can't see that. A little bit of pink here. You can test it out on your paper if you like. I probably should have done that first. A little kind of pink underneath the eye. Maybe a little bit in the spines. And the hook. And I feel like it has a little bit of a gradient here. So I'm gonna add some of that paint there, clean off my brush, and then just take the wet clean brush over that into that blue area. And that creates a little bit of a gradient. So that's gonna be a little bit wetter because I added some water basically to it. The paper itself. And so I'll take a little bit more time for that one space to dry. And if you want more red there, you can add more color too. And it'll kind of just fade over the entire space. And you can move it around a little bit. And that's gonna probably warp just a little bit under that paper. So you wanna be careful when you're doing that technique, not to use too much water. My brush released a lot of water out of um, the barrel. Sometimes there's not a lot of control. A little bit more control if you're using a regular brush. It's not quite as fast, but you do get more control. There's a lot of pink throughout this mantis's body. And I think maybe just a little bit more here. And if you have too much, you can clean up your brush and pick up a little bit more and clean it, pick up a little bit more. So you can remove paint as well before it dries. I'm gonna clean off my brush. I'm then gonna add a little bit of the brown color test that out and I'm going to add it just to a few of the places here. There's a little bit in the eye here and again I can do a gradient by putting some in there and then the clean damp brush just wiping it over the edge there to bring it up and I didn't add as much water from my brush that time. It was a little bit more controlled and then the spines seem to have a little bit of brown in them. Uh, the tips especially, and I'm not being super exact, I'm just kind of adding it in real quick. And then maybe the tips of the feet. bit in the mouth but I can define that more later. And lastly I think I just need to add a little bit more blue. Maybe I was a little bit light-handed with that. Dab it off on my towel, test it out, dab it off a little bit more and I think I just need to add it just a little bit here, taking just a tiny bit, adding it in there as well. And maybe a little bit here. That's mostly dry. It's fine that I didn't mind that it would kind of run together a little bit. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more yellow. Some of these spaces real quick. Then I'm gonna clean off my brush, let this dry, and add some ink lines. 
So now that this is dry, and you can test that by just kind of dabbing your hand over it, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some ink lines. So I'll start with the black 005 micron, which is the smallest tipped micron I have. And I'm going to redraw in the scientific name and common name. I can refine some of the letters or just trace right over them. And then I'm going to redraw and redefine some of these lines of the mantis itself. So if you still have the mantis in front of you, you can refer to it and redefine some of these lines. And if it's already gone, you can look at maybe your reference image or the about me page and figure out what you might need to change. Uh, and you can redefine things based on where the paint landed or the way you're seeing it now. And since this is a small, thin line, it's very forgiving. Kind of like when you use light pencil marks. Let's just go throughout and redraw those lines. And again, don't worry too much about being exact. This is just a sketch. Don't worry too much if you made a mistake or you think you made a mistake. Here, I just thicken the line a little bit. Just a sketch. And right here, I'm redefining this space. This, I didn't want this quite as wide, so I left this on this side and redefined that. So next, I'm going to add some O1 micron lines. I'm going to thicken the common name. And then I'm also going to just go throughout and thicken some lines I feel need to be defined a little bit more. There's some areas that stand out a little bit more, look darker. And I'm going to add some more lines that are even thicker, so I'm going to keep that in mind as I continue to add these lines. A lot of these lines are pretty delicate. So I don't think I'll need to add a lot of thicker lines to it. Maybe I will. Looks pretty good. Last thing, I'm gonna add some thicker, oh wait, black micron lines. This is the thickest of the microns and it has a very, very thick line compared to the others and it does tend to smudge, so be careful when you're using it to let it dry before your hand runs over that same space. I'm just gonna add it to some areas to give a little bit more definition so shadowed areas will give it the line variation will give us some contrast so help it pop off the page a bit
and now we're done. Great job observing your world and keep practicing. Make sure to add in any observations you have about this mantis, how you are feeling about your art, um, any mistakes you made and while you were working, anything you may have forgotten or would have changed. Like there's, may, there's a leg missing right here. Maybe I would have wanted to add that in. And just, this is your sketch, so make it your own. Thank you again for joining me. Please share your art on our Facebook fan art page and use the hashtag NatureCreateArt to have it featured on our social media. If you have any questions or like to see a plant or animal featured in a future lesson, please leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and check out NatureSketchCreate.com for future lesson crates.